do you have your friends and your finery, but no place to go? Do you laugh and cry, but no longer feel? Do you wear these masks? Then, perhaps, your oath and service may please the black glove, the blood of the hunter and the blood of the hunted, the joy of the hidden and the joy of the seeker, the blood of the eye and the blood of the gate, the joy of the living and the joy of the dead. Are you one with these things? Then perhaps your oath and service may please Mephala. Just like every other day, people go about their business, man and myrrh alike, shopping, working, sleeping, worshipping. Merchants sell their wares both in open-air markets and in stores. Busy cities with busy markets and small towns with simple stalls. Smiths forge arms and armor, clothiers patch holes in pants and sew new ones. Apothecaries experiment and concoct new brews. Wizards, warriors, guards, and commoners, they all go about their business, their daily lives a grind. Thus is life in the year 427 of the Third Era in Vardenfell District. Nothing ever changes. The days go by, and the daily grind continues. Or does it? Underneath the surface, there is a second Vardenfell, a darker Vardenfell. The folks making an honest living, whether it be mining or farming, they have their jobs. And the underbelly of society has theirs. The Kamona Tong, the local crime syndicate, operates right beneath the surface. Dig even a little bit, and you'll see their influence. They are strong. They have people in high places. Their members infiltrate imperial guilds as well as great houses. The Thieves' Guild plies its trade in almost every major city. Congregated in some of the seedier public houses, the Thieves' Guild operates in secret, unlike the Kimona Tong. They are discreet. They rob, but do not kill. They are not powerful, so it is in their best interest to operate in secret. Their members do not openly brag about their membership. But there is another, another group that is even more secretive than the Thieves' Guild and more deadly than the Kimona Tong. This group, shrouded in secrecy and legend, made its start thousands of years ago. It is said that Mephala, the web spinner, taught the ancient Chimer to defend themselves from their enemies with secret murders. From this necessary yet disorganized beginning, a small group of Mephala worshippers organized under the leadership of one they designated the Night Mother. Under the tutelage of this first Night Mother, this disorganized group found that certain killings pleased their Daedric Prince more than others, and so this group began killing. Their expertise soon found a calling when they were hired out to do the dirty work of others. Slowly building a reputation for secrecy, deadliness, and expertise. It is said that they grew so bold and so brazen 
with their success that, when they committed their most high-profile assassination, the potentate Versaduche in the year 324 of the Second Era, they wrote their name on the wall with the potentate's own blood. Morag Tong. At this point, their usefulness had come to an end. The people who had employed their services for hundreds of years disavowed the Morag Tong, making their elimination their highest priority. The guild was banned. Except in Morrowind, to this day, the Morag Tong remains in business, offering their services. And their services are still used. Indeed, the Morag Tong plays an essential role in Morrowind politics. They prevent civil war between the great houses by remaining completely neutral. But with all their secrecy, where would one find such a group if one wanted to swear their oath and service to please Mafala. Where does one seek the place to remove their mask? To make your oath and enter our service, the worthy must seek the Grand Master, who by tradition lives in the unseen and unlooked for corners of Vivek City, between the blood of battle and the waters of life. With this cryptic message, the hunt for the elusive Morag Tong begins. After our arrival in Sedanin, we found the town a little too low speed for us. So we took the road north and followed the signs to Balmora. Arriving at the city and entering through the south gate, we look around and spot a watering hole right by the gate. Convenient. We see it's called the Lucky Lockup, and we enter before us an Altmer woman. Kulumer. She seems too arrogant to be good company, so we approach a red guard standing alone. Okay, I'm listening. He is polite and introduces himself. Hey Kim is his name, and after a few minutes we ask him what he does for a living, and though reluctantly and probably after having a few too many sujamas, he reveals that he is part of a secret organization called the Morag Tong. Assassins, he says. They offer services, if you're interested, he continues, and if you want to join, well, head on over to Vivek. That's where the Grandmaster lives. That's, um, quite forthcoming of you, Hikim. Uh, thanks for that. After paying our tab, we exit out of the public house and head over to the commercial district to see if we can find the Morag Tong guild house. On our way there, we stop by the local armorer, Meldor, a shifty little bossmer, and we sell our armor and purchase new armor. The little fetcher rips us off. <laughs> he thinks he's being a hard negotiator, but in reality, he's just irritating us. After our transaction is complete, we sneak our way into his living quarters downstairs and rob him. This makes up for the hard bargain he drove. Maybe that will teach him a lesson. We pawn off the rest of our junk and head to the Morag Tong guild house. 
There we try to pry a little more information from the members. We get nothing new. Everyone tells us the same thing. Head to Vivek. But we do find a book on a small table. The Black Glove. We read on the cover. Reading it, we get information on how to find the Guildmaster, Eno Lalu, in Vivek. Between the blood of battle and the waters of life, the book says. Well, let's head to Vivek and see what we can find. We take the Silt Strider and sit back for the trip. During the ride, we ponder over the words of the book, The Black Glove. We go over the hint in our head, over and over. Between the blood of battle and the waters of life. The Caravaneer mentions, making small talk, that there's an arena match coming up in a few days and recommends that we go see it. And that's it. That's when it clicks. The blood of battle must be the arena canton. And the waters of life? Well, that must be the canal works, where all of the water flows in and out of the canton. Upon reaching Vivek, we ask for directions from the caravaneer to the arena canton any points. And we head over to the arena canton of Vivek City. We're not overly familiar with the layout of these giant structures, so we search around. Eventually, we reach a door to the canal works, and sure enough, there is water flowing here. However, we see nowhere to go. It's a bit of a dead end. Perhaps on the other side? We make our way to the other side of the Canton Canal Works and eventually come across a door to a storage area. We exterminate the rodent infestation and carefully explore the rooms, searching each crate, barrel, and chest for valuables. We gather enough items to have made ourselves a tidy profit, but we are no closer to finding the actual hiding place of Enolalu and his morag tongue. After pilfering the entire storage room of every septum and valuable, we eventually come to a door that is more securely locked than any we have seen so far. It's both trapped and locked, and we carefully pick the lock and disarm the trap. A blighted rat eyeballs us, but doesn't move, and we slay it with an arrow. Entering the room, we find more crates here, and we instinctively begin looting when out of the corner of our eye, we see a small hatch on the floor, hidden behind some crates and barrels. This has to be it, the secret hiding place of the Morag Tong. But now that we have found it, what do we do? Will, will we be allowed in? Is it really as simple as just finding it? And we just walk inside? Will we have to fight? Or perhaps they'll demand a trial to prove that we are worthy? Find out next time as we continue exploring the full story of the Morag Tong questline. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next episode of Lore and Loot, Morrowind.